Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Tunnel Fall. I'm your host, CPC Gamer, and yes, it took me that long to come up with another one of those. Let's do some crafting! I'm going to get myself a backup pick and a new sword, and we're also going to enchant them just to see what bonuses I can get for it. So, start with a reagent, and begin with a sword. Yeah, they look like pretty good spells. I don't know if I'm keen on getting knockback, because that can make the game kind of tactical, but unbreaking is good. Oh, and fortune is even better! That's the one you want! Especially since, today, we're heading back to the canyon where we went in the previous episode, and exploring it some more. It was pretty rich with desirable commodities, so, you know, hopefully we can find even more. We do kind of need a few more diamonds to make the weapons and armor we need for the final boss. If my door will let me out, so hopefully we'll be able to find those. Also, you're almost broken, so you can go. And also, since it's a long walk up to the canyon, and I've already wasted a minute of your time, I'm going to throw in a scene transition so I can cut out the boring trek north. Man, what a journey that was! We found an alternate dimension, went pony trekking on the moon with Freddie Mercury, there was a fantastic Stan Lee cameo. Shame I caught all that stuff out and brought the video back immediately after you returned to the world of Minecraft. Ah well. Down we go! By the way, trigger warning for anyone who gets worried by that sort of thing, I guess. Oh, and that spider's probably fine. Anyways. We followed the river the last time we came down here, so this time we'll be heading to the east. And you know what? That zombie's probably going to be fine too, so let's just get exploring. I think. Is there anything out there? No. Oh, that was a bat. Okay. I'm getting confused by nature in this game. It's not fair. That happened when I visited a friend in America once. I said how I'd seen a pretty big moth, and my friend said that's a bat, and also the size of your face. That was pretty scary. Oh, also, I think I recognize this place. I think this is where the creeper showed up towards the end of the last episode. And that actually is a stroke of luck, because I found a bunch of stuff down here that had potential. I just didn't get around to exploring it. So, hey, let's confirm where I'm at and explore it now. So this should be a tunnel down to the remains of that zombie dungeon. Although I don't remember passing a plant, so... Who even knows where I'm at right now? As long as it's got stuff to pinch and I can find my way out, I don't think it really matters a whole bunch. Although I see gold, so I'm actually going to start with that. Now, you can use gold for mechanisms, like powered railway lines, but I am going to use it as a means of curing zombie villages, as I mentioned. I mean, now that I've discovered the means of doing it, I'm just really eager to get down to it, you know? Also, I'm just gonna pop a torch there so we know where I need to start going up and get right down to business. Also, I say I found out how to cure zombie villages. I looked it up online. Oh, no! Oh, man, what happened to my water? Oh, that's gonna make exploring this lava pit way more difficult than it should have been. And more difficult than it needed to be. I might need to, like, start exercising care or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah! So, in a previous episode, I said that the fortune enchantment was a chance to re-roll any unique block with the potential to find more of the same behind it. That is what the enchantment used to do. Now, if you have a fortune enchanted pickaxe, there's a chance that unique blocks will drop two collectibles, not one or multiple collectibles in the case of Lapis Lazuli. And this is so safe, you guys, you don't even know. I mean, this is how I used to navigate pits of lava, before I knew the magic of, like, turning it all into obsidian. Oh, but this more than makes up for it. Especially since I've got the fortune enchantment. This is gonna be great. That was great. I mean, I think I may have enough to make my intended loadout for the end boss now. But let's, let's keep exploring and see what's down here. I want to collect more stuff. I want to collect all this stuff. 
or at least as much as I can reasonably carry within the next 10 minutes or so before I make my way back to the surface to take stock of where I'm at. Assuming I don't die before then, which continues to be a very real possibility. Or maybe not, because there doesn't seem to be as many spawns down here as there are in my house. I mean, maybe it's because I ventured away from home and the game's cutting me some slack just in case I want to build a new home? I don't know. Alright, let's try this bit again. And marvel at how much more quickly this is going to go now that I've got the efficiency enchantment. I mean, looky me, right? Like, I'm hearing spiders here and about, which I think means there's another dungeon nearby. But I'm not going to go digging for it this time. Maybe I'll come back and take another look later. I mean, it could just as easily mean that I'm in a dark cave, which is where the monsters spawn, so... Who even knows? I'm finding coal. I see, this is one of the most frustrating things with Minecraft. You see how I found another little layer of coal? If I hadn't dug one extra block, I would never have found that. And I always get the feeling that diamonds and gold and all that stuff, it's just behind the stuff that I mined out, and it's forever taunting me for missing it. Although with that said, this is a pretty neat little coal vein. Or it was, it's... it's mine now. Let's make it a cove, also, just so I can ditch some of this stuff and then continue onwards. I mean, I do it now, but I don't want monsters to come up behind me and push me into the lava. Also, with that talk of almost finding the cool stuff, I'm kind of hoping that's what I'm going to do now. Probably not, though. But you see what I mean? Even when I find something I want, I'm complaining about it. I'm British. That's what we do. We stand in line and complain about things. And if it's a really long line, we complain about standing in it, and that is one of the best things in the world. I had that at DragonCon once. I went to buy a pass, but because I was paying cash, I got to skip the line and go to the dedicated cash register. And I said to the guy at the front, as an Englishman, I would like to complain. Looks like a bloody good queue right there. And the guy was so happy that I just lived up to one of my stereotypes, right down to the bit where I had used bloody as an adjective. Now this bit's gonna get kinda tricky, especially since I could very easily get pushed into the lava. I think we're going to have to dig around that water. No! Water! Better idea! I'm going to dig a little alcove that way, and I'm going to refill my bucket. Because that way, it'll be easier to explore the cave. Now see what probably happened with the other one? I put the bucket down, gravel fell on top of it, overwriting the water, and making it vanish. Because I did a similar thing when building a house underwater. You can use gravel or sand to get rid of entire columns of water in a single go. It's a very useful tool. Also, picking up the water means I'm not going to get pushed into the lava. That's also a very handy tool in this, you know, one death, no gizzies, backsies game world. And speaking of which, get rid of some more of that. Lovely. So that's like when you do some cooking, and you put the pans in the sink afterwards, they hiss, and you just feel like a MIGHTY blacksmith from days of old. Or is that just me? Random fact that I learned while making my Viking video game, Viking blacksmiths used to whistle a particular tune while they were working, so they would be sure to do roughly the same work in roughly the same time frame for the same job. Oh, and I see those diamonds! But no, because of their whistling, People sometimes believe that that particular tune was magical, or the blacksmiths were in general. And I can see how that kind of thinking would come about. Because if you take a rock and you turn it into a sword, to someone who doesn't know how metallurgy works, that's a pretty magical looking process. And of course with that said, the Vikings used to believe that maths was witchcraft so only women were allowed to do it, so... You know. Back on topic, I love the speed enchantment that I put on my pickaxe. I mean, I'm feeling some degree of regret for throwing out my diamond one, but that goes away when I think of all the other diamonds I found. Like, I can throw together some luxury items with this. Oh, good old rock slides. Love them. Oh man, I love this song! Wait, no, that, that doesn't make sense to people who want me right now. You might have noticed, but I've turned off the in-game soundtrack, and I'm replacing it with my own music, I'm listening to my entire playlist on Shuffle right now, 
and the main theme from Final Fantasy VIII just started playing. Eyes on me? I love that song. It's so sad. And I think this is about as far as we're going to get in this particular route. Although I am going to grab that gold up there. Then I think we're going to make our way back to the surface, take stock of where we are, and call it a video. Although that is getting ahead of myself, because we're only halfway through. Although with that said, I'm out of torches, so... Man, who even knows what we're doing anymore? Not me. I'm just running on autopilot and doing free association with the words I'm saying for the entertainment of the internet. Ooh. What's this way? Is there anything this way, or is that entirely dark and I can't light it up? Throw it on the to-do list! You know, just... If ever I feel like making a 15-minute walk to check out, I definitely maybe. No, actually, no. Let's do it now. I'm gonna go quite a distance with my one torch, <laughs> but we'll see what's there. Actually, yeah, that looks like there's something up there, so... If we can get through that gravel, which I don't have the resources to really do right now, there might be something up there, so put it on the to-do list, along with, you know, finding love and happiness and... you know, geo cartridges, because I still didn't find any of those things yet. Found a stack of diamonds, though, so that's enough for now. Let's go home. Eventually. Again, I reserve the right to get sidetracked and collect whatever other bits I can find here and about. Although, actually, since we are here... Yeah, that gravel can go away. Like, I was considering keeping hold of it so I could try and grind some flint out of it, but... That is too much work for what you get out of it. I mean, if I really need some arrows, I can... Probably just go and beat up some skeletons or something. And speaking of which, I'm noticing that I haven't used my sword yet, which is mighty disappointing. Like, what is the point in giving it some really neat buffs if I don't use it? Now, hopefully we'll find something on the way back out. Because knockback is a fun enchantment, especially since we're wandering around base level lava beds right now. Next question. How much of a monster do I sound that I'm looking to go out and kill stuff? Especially since I'm hoping to throw them into a pit of lava. But let's not break into discussion groups about this one, shall we? Actually, hang on, will you? Hang on. Aha! Yes, that's redstone. Redstone glows when you touch it or hit it, if you didn't already know. And what is up here? Wait, no, I'm an idiot. <laughs> What's up there? is the little coal vein that I already mined, like, five minutes ago. I'm super intelligent, you guys, and I... I know what I'm doing. I can see a few bits here, so let's go this way. Looks like a nice little side path with not much in it, so I can give a last little booster to my stuff before I resurface. In addition to killing the video once again. I don't know what's going on. I think... it's because I haven't recorded this game for a couple months at this point. Or even played it for a couple months. Like, I, I've been meaning to. I wanted to record this almost as soon as I got back from Japan, but then work kicked off, and then I got sick, and literally everything in the entire universe has conspired against me. Like, it's tough being me. Anyways, just gonna grab these last couple bits and make my way back to the surface. Something I've been promising for quite some time in this video, but that I will now actually do. Maybe. I mean, unless I see something interesting. And I've been wondering, lately, you know how there's been a rise in attention deficit disorder like, over the next last X number of years? I know that a lot of it is down to broadening the definition of what we classify as ADD, but is some of it down to the way that TV is presented? Because if you look at a lot of TV, it's five or six stories, and they quickly cut between them as the episode progresses obviously with bright and wild smash-cut montages between each section. I mean, obviously, the attention is to make you watch until the end, but ultimately, wouldn't that condition you to only pay attention to something for a short time? Like, until the next smash-cut montage happens? I don't know. I know that if we could go, X thing causes Y problem, then Y problem wouldn't really exist anymore, and it's one of the... Yeah! Knockback confirmed for best enchantment! Only in close quarters, though. I I may need to reconsider this when I'm doing my nighttime monster hunting. 
And depending on how much gold I picked up while I was down here, I'm absolutely gonna do that after this episode. I'm gonna, you know, heal up some more zombies. Oh, actually, I see some more gold! Yes! Distractions within distractions! How far down does this rabbit hole go? That's like... 16 walls. Anyways, ups we go! Very... very slowly. Now, there is some mechanic behind how quickly you can swim up a pillar of water like this, but I'm not entirely sure how they work. I mean, it doesn't seem to drain your hunger gauge any more than when you're climbing quickly or slowly, so... Whatever, right? Oh man, you ever played Goldeneye? Because I did something like this in one of those stages. The Aztec stage, you have to climb a ladder while under fire to complete the stage. And the best way to complete it, I found, was to exploit the way the ladder was programmed and walk backwards up the wall, facing out, so you can return fire. Like, it was all kinds of stupid, but that makes it all the more memorable. On speaking of coming under fire, hopefully there's nobody up here to attack me. I mean, I was a little bit worried I'd get attacked at the top of the ascent, just get thrown back down. But we were safe there, but we're not out of the woods yet, because it's night time. And we actually need to go through the woods yet, so... You know what? My cliché statement remains true. Now, it's no good fighting a guy. We're going this way whether you like it or not. Right. Oh, well, look at that! You have zombies coming for us already. And skeletons! Okay! Let's get rid of these guys and make our dash home. And you see, this is the problem with knockback in an open area. I like to rush the enemies down and... That was a good one! Look at that! That guy skipped like a stone! But yeah, it's hard to do a total rushdown when you throw monsters away from you with every single attack. Also, did that spider attack and kill the sheep? Like, the enemies are turning on the non-hostile NPCs now. That That's pretty bad. Right, so we've got two minutes trek ahead of us. And I'm thinking I might cut it out and transition to me being back at the house. Although the fact that I'm still talking and doing stuff means that I can't reasonably cut this out. Oh no, I can't take the easy way out of what I'm doing. What a what a terrible hardship. I mean, especially since it's dawn now, and the monsters are going to be leaving us alone pretty soon anyway. Man, time passes faster than you think in this thing. Like, I didn't think I was underground for an entire day, and yet here we are. I mean, this goes back to something I said earlier, but why would you even take a clock with you when you go exploring? Like, I lost total track of time, and I'm just fine. And a single point of data is all you need to prove everything is right. That's how science works, that is. Alright, we're almost there. And I sure hope everybody's doing alright without me. I mean, probably. Because the other village, that's doing just fine without a protector. It's the ones near to me who are in the most danger. And isn't that the most profound thing I've said in this entire recording session? Perhaps more so than my previous psychology lectures. Ah, but there is my home. It's one of the most wonderful feelings of going on holiday, being able to see home, but not actually getting there, because that means that the holiday is over. I've said it before and I'll say it again, psychology is weird. Right, before we finish up, let's make a start on processing some of this stuff, and see what we found on our little adventure. And look at all that stuff, and 21 diamonds! Like, that's as many as we need without the first expedition to that canyon. Yeah, we are totally going to build some luxury items out of that, just you watch. Alright, I'm going to sort this mess out, and when we come back, continue getting ready for a dragon, I guess. So, join us next time for whatever it is, and until next time, goodbye! <laughs>